Welcome you to this Pentecost Sunday service and we bring you greetings from the pastors, board members, elders and all staff. At this moment, even though we may not be able to gather, but we wish above all things that you may prosper and be in excellent health even as I so prosper. We trust that you will enjoy today Pentecost service and be blessed in many folds. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 16, verse 6 to 16. Verse 6. But because I may say this thing unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is as Peter for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. Of judgment, because a prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, shall He speak. And He will show you things to come. He shall glorify Me, 
For you shall receive of mine and shall show unto you. All things that the Father had are mine. Therefore say I that he shall take of mine and shall show unto you. A little while, and you shall not see me, and again, a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. May the Lord bless the reading of His words. Amen. Today, I'm going to pray for the offering. But before that, I would like to inform you that you can bring your tithes and offerings to the church office. Yes, the church office is open every day except Sunday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And also you can uh, do it online, wire online, uh, where all the details are being shown in the slide. Okay, now let us pray. Father, we thank you that all things were created through you and for you. And in you, all things exist. The Bible says that we should bring in our offerings and tithes to your storehouse and that you will respond by opening up windows of heaven and sending down blessing upon blessing. We give in response to your goodness to us. Lord, we help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the, king, the work of your kingdom. We ask that you will receive our tithes and offering and that you will supply all our needs. Give us a peaceful heart. Lord, we thank you and we pray, ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Thank you for having us in your homes today as we worship together. On this Pentecost Sunday, let's invite the sweet Holy Spirit into our hearts and into our homes as we worship Him and give Him all glory and honour and praise. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain Oh, so open up heaven 
Lord, fill our hearts. Fill us anew. Fill us afresh. And come take us by the hand and lead us, Lord. Hallelujah. Lead me on, Holy Spirit. Fill my heart, comfort my soul. Lead me on into your presence. Touch me, Lord Jesus, I need you. I can't live without you. I can walk this road alone. In my heart, I need you. Holy One, come take my hand. Lead me on, Holy Spirit. Fill my heart, come flood my soul. Lead me on into your prayer. Touch me, Lord Jesus, I need you. I can't live without you. I can walk this road alone in my heart. I need. Take my hand I can live without you I can walk this road alone In my heart I need you Lord, come take our hand, Lord. Hallelujah. We need you. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Grace family. Good morning. It is truly a wonderful, wonderful day this morning. Blessed Pentecost Sunday. And greeting to each of you in the family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. So good to see each one of you this morning. May the peace of God be upon you. We have a, we have a message this morning that will transform and touch the, our heart this morning. Amen. Father, Lord, we come to you. We lift up this wonderful service into your hand. Come, Holy Spirit. Speak to us. 
us. Speak to my brother and my sister in their home right now, Lord. May their word, may this word bring strength into their heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it is a little bit funny. We are coming on the video. This is my second time doing this with you guys. And I must tell you that I'm, yeah, I love to see you face to face on Sunday morning service in our church to worship the Lord. But God have a divine purpose. Oh, this is the first time in the history we celebrate our, our Passover lockdown, our, our Resurrection Sunday lockdown, Ascension Sunday lockdown. Uh, this is the first time also Pentecost Sunday lockdown. God must have reason. He must have purpose. He always have a purpose. Nothing happened by accident with the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything can go wrong, but the Lord is in control. Nothing changes. Everything go according to the plan that He has for the humankind and for each one of us here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have a great report to give you. A praise report, I call it, because it is so wonderful that we have come together to pray during this lockdown oh during this lockdown we came together you know we came together we came together to pray since 21st of march we came together to pray all started by our prayer and fasting for the 21 days it started on the on that, on that ground to come together to pray for 21 days as Grace family and we came together and many of them joined at night 8 o'clock and pray with the booklet that we have and we pray for our nation for our family for our church and then we also pray for the COVID-19 condition but the prayer didn't stop we continue praying even after the whole thing over we continue praying we pray for the uh, we pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit nine gift of the Holy Spirit we pray for the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit we pray even for the seven mountains we pray for the five for ministry the spiritual gift oh we are keep praying for the past for the past many many nights and tonight 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 is a 72 night 72 nights the church has come together every night eight in the night 8 p.m. and night together to pray to see God's face brothers and sisters I'm so blessed. Thank you for all those who have come. Thank you to the pastors. Oh, thank you, Lord, to the workers, church workers. Thank you, Lord, to some of the elders who came. Thank you, Lord, for the Grace family. Oh, all those of you who came together, the, the cell leaders, the leaders, uh, oh, the hosts. Thank you for coming. And members, each one of you came, came every night, 8 o'clock, to be in the presence of God. Some of you waited. Waited even before the event, event started. You came, you waited, and you waited before the Lord. You prayed together. Oh, it's an awesome moment every night we had. Oh, not only that. With that, we had a 10 days wait. 10 days wait since Ascension Sunday 21st. We had 10 day wait. We read through the book of Acts. Oh, we prayed over the book of Acts. We released the word of God in the book of Acts to our church, to our family members, to our loved ones, into our nation. Oh, many came for the three hours prayer, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Oh, what a faithful people you are. Thank you very much, you guys who came every night and on these 10 days to pray alongside. It is an awesome moment. We prayed and we give God all the glory for this opportunity we have. And tonight, once again, it's 72 night. 72 night tonight. Please do not miss the opportunity to come and join us tonight. We want to give thanks for what God is doing in our church, in our ministry, in our home, in our home, with our husband, wife, children. Ah, I don't know how to express, but it's such a joy, such excitement saying what God is in store for us as a church. The church, could, the, 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 the nation shut down everything, shut down the place of meeting, worship, prayer, sports, game, everything shut down, but praise the Lord, Grace Clang, we still had a prayer meeting running every night. Oh, we had a teaching going on every time. We had a revival teaching going on. Oh, praise the Lord, we did not stop. We keep on communicating. We keep on praying. God has been good to us. And for those of you who have come, I want to say thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you very much. So please do not forget to join us tonight for our 72 nights of prayer together as a church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, as you look at the whole church, uh, we are interesting to find the arrangement, the ministry of our ministry of our church, or the whole thing started with the Lord Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and our Savior. Three and a half years, he lived, he walked, he spoke, he cried, he prayed, he fed. Oh, he did miracles, miracles that cannot be understood. He did great, great miracles, great miracles. Some are supernatural miracles that we can never understand. He showed the power that he was having in him. He showed the power that he was carrying in him. Oh, he did a great thing. He, from him, he had a lot of people come and receive the touch of God over their life. Laws, we find from the Jewish world, we find from the Gentile world, they were impressed by what the Lord was doing. For three and a half years, he did that. And after three and a half years, he led to the Passover. 
And that Passover, He made the first sacrament, our communion, the first breaking of bread, the giving of the cup of wine, the emblem. He was given to us. Oh, wonderful. It was a time of celebration. He washed the disciples' feet. And right after that, He went to the cross of Calvary and died, hung between earth and heaven for us, for you, for me, for the world. And right after that, we had an excellent, excellent three days of burial. And after that, He was resurrected. Amen. Resurrected. Oh, Jesus. He put death to death. He put death to death. Because of his resurrection, the, death, the sting of the death has no power on us anymore. He given us to an eternal life. Eternal life. Oh, eternal life. Life after we die is eternal. He given it to us. He given it to us. Hallelujah. And through that, after resurrection, you know what he did? He did not stop. He went around traveling and preaching in every kampong, every area, meeting up all the disciples. What are you doing? Teaching about the kingdom. Oh, it's all about the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. He never forgot speaking about the king of king and the Lord of lords. It's all about the king. It's all about the king. It's all about God the Father. He was speaking about the name of God the Father to everybody he sees. He was preaching about the message of the kingdom. That's what the Bible says, book of Acts chapter 1 verse 3. And then after that came ascension. When ascension came, before he ascended, he told to the disciple, Hey, wait, wait, wait. You'll be clothed with the power. Wait. Oh, he asked us to wait. He didn't ask us to run. He asked us to wait. And, and after that, during the waiting time, all of us know that 500 people came. But at the end of the day, only 120 people waited. And they received the baptism of Pentecost. And through that, we have the birthing of the first church in Jerusalem. Birthing of the first church in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Now, through all this journey, what caught me is the scripture, Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Oh, he spoke to in my former book, Most Excellent Theophilus. We do not know who the Theophilus is, but the name Theophilus simply means beloved. Uh, because the word say excellent, he could be a Roman soldier or Roman higher officer. Some people say he could be a very wealthy man. Some people say he even could be a priest, a high priest. So we do not know, but the way he put it is an excellent Theophilus. He could be a Roman soldier. Let's put it that way. He's speaking to someone and he was sharing this a gospel to this person so this person will know who Jesus is what Jesus did he was giving account to him so that he will come to know the mercy of Jesus upon his life and he said I wrote about the Lord Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven he gave instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostle he had chosen oh he gave instruction he gave instruction after his suffering he presented himself to everybody but this is what caught my eyes he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. He spoke about the kingdom of God. He didn't speak about anything else. He just spoke about the kingdom of God. Something about the kingdom in the heart of Jesus. Something about the kingdom of God in the heart of Jesus. In fact, in Matthew 6.10, our Lord prayer, he even prayed the prayer. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Brothers, sisters, he prayed the prayer. Again, the kingdom of God. Not only that, in fact, he even taught in Matthew 6.33, but seek ye first his kingdom. Hmm. Seek ye first his kingdom. And, uh, and his righteousness, all these things will be given to you. He, he challenged the people to seek God's kingdom. To seek God's kingdom. Not man's kingdom, God's kingdom. Seek ye first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Something about his kingdom. Oh, something about his kingdom that he want you and me to know. He asks us to seek this kingdom and all these things will be added into all these things will be added once you seek God's kingdom and his right standing and his righteousness all these things will be added into you in my traveling in my traveling many people ask me when I preach about the message of kingdom which is my heartbeat message of kingdom the Holy Spirit anointing unction these are my heartbeat I love all these messages I preach this very frequently and many ask me what is the what is kingdom? What is the definition about what God is speaking of? Jesus speaking about kingdom. What is this all about? Oh, I tell you, brothers and sisters, I was very, very, very blessed, I'm telling you, because I read some great books out there. The one of the great writers about the subject on the kingdom is called Miles, Miles Munro. He wrote a beautiful book on the kingdom. He even wrote the book on the Holy Spirit. Ah, I, I read through many of his books. I am so blessed. In fact, I am, I am subscribing to what is written there because it's so true, so powerful because he, he reflects the worldview of the Bible. Oh, we must have the worldview of the Bible. And this is what he said. This is what he said. He said, kingdom is not democracy. Huh? Kingdom is not democracy. Even Kingdom is not even religion. It's not republic. 
Oh, it's not democracy, religion, republic. You see, but a kingdom is a governing influence of a king. Yay, wonderful. A kingdom is a governing influence of a king over his territory. That means territory, that means there is a, there's a, there's a group, there's a space over his territory impacting his will, influencing his will over the group of people. His purpose and his intent is to produce citizens of people who express the culture and manifest the nature of the kingdom. Oh my goodness. Who produce, who produce the culture and manifest the nature of the kingdom. Oh, that's what the kingdom is. It's to influence his will. It's to influence his culture. It's to manifest his culture. Nothing else. That's what the kingdom of God is, to be like him, to be like the king of king and the Lord of Lord. Oh, to have the nature, to have that quality. In fact, if you read the book of Genesis, you find, oh, God says that create man in our image. And he also told that image is giving dominion, giving dominion to man oh, over the heaven, earth and, and uh, sky, earth and water, giving dominion to three areas. Dominion simply means to be governors, to govern, oh, to govern, to rule, to enforce. But as you and I know, there is a sin in the Garden Eden and all of us fall. And that power that was given to us is taken away, is taken away. But looks like it, God wants to implement that once again. He wants us to have that same power that He spoke to us from the day of creation so that we have the dominion. Oh, we have the dominion to rule, to rule together, to rule together with Him, with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why He was speaking about the kingdom. And that is the reason why He has to give us the Holy Spirit. Oh, he said this very clearly in a book of Acts, chapter 1, chapter 1, 6 to 7. He said, people gathered around. You know, the disciples gathered around. They sat there. Oh, they spoke to them. They sat there. They spoke, you know, and they asked this. The question that they asked is this. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Let's listen. The disciples are so interested about the kingdom of Israel, but he was not interested about the kingdom of man. He was interested about the kingdom of God. So when Joshua asked, whose side are you? When, when Joshua was accounted by the angel, he asked the angel, whose side are you? Isn't it wonderful when the, the angel answered, neither. I'm not your side. I'm not even the Jericho side. I'm on my own side. Brothers and sisters, whatever happening in this world, it is going to proclaim his name. It's going to magnify his name. He's not even interested about the question asked by these guys. He said, what? It's not for you to know and time and date. Basically, he told them off. It's not for you to know the time and date. Uh, a father have to set. Only my father knows about it. Only God knows about it. Only king of king knows about it. But he said, but he said, what is in me is, I will give you that power. Hallelujah. I will give you that dunamis power. I will give you the inherited power that does not need to have a, a, a what you call modern technology to run. Oh, today everything shut down. No modern technology. Oh, this is the only thing we have, the video. Everything shut down. No lights, no nothing to, to show our greatness. We come back to the basic. We come back to our home. We come back as a family. We come back together to pray. Back to basic. House to house. There's the prophetic utterance given to this church. House to house. Acts 2020 by our apostle. And it's coming to pass in 2020. When we are coming to house to house. Don't you think that prophecy come to pass? We are right now in the house for 72 over days. House to house praying. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, what? Well, I give you power. I give you dunamis power. Power of the Holy Spirit. Power of the Holy Spirit. And then you will be a witness. The word witness simply means martyrdom. Martyr. Willing to die. You must come to a point of willing to give up your life. That's what happened to the early church. All of them willing to die for God. All of them willing to die for Jesus. All of them willing to die for the Calvary. Uh, for the cross of Calvary. They're willing to die for the message of the gospel. But you'll be witness in Jerusalem. Oh, we will be witness in Klang. And from there, God will take us to Sha'alam, to Mar Arapa, Slango, to other part of Malaysia and to the other part of the world. My brother, my sister, start with Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And we see how the disciples with the appointment of the seven deacon, they travel. They travel. They travel. And we saw in the life of Paul, he traveled. He traveled. He traveled. This morning, this morning we had Elder James read the scripture. He read the scripture in John 16, 6 to uh, 11. Oh, it's a 6 to um, 16, if I'm mistaken. Huh? 
John 16 verse 6 to 16. Oh, there's a wonderful scripture about the promise that, of the Lord giving us the Comforter. Oh, that's the reason He gave us the Comforter. There are a few things I like to pick up from here and we see how we go from here. He spoke about from this Comforter what happened. This Comforter will come to con convict us. This Holy Spirit will come on the Pentecost day to convict us. Oh, to convict us. To speak to us so that we will know where we stand. Not just to convict us, but to permanently dwell in us. Or permanently indwell in us. If you read Genesis, you find the Holy Spirit was hovering. You read the whole account of the Old Testament, you find the Holy Spirit come, do the job and leave. He does not stay. You know why? Because the sacrifice was not done. There was no blood. There was no shedding of the blood. The so Holy Spirit could not come in yet. He was just come, finish the work, go off. He could not dwell. He rests for a moment. Finish the job, he go off. In fact, it was the experience of the burning bush. Burning bush experience, if you remember, the bush was on fire. The bush was on fire, but the bush was not fired up. Oh, the Holy Spirit just come and show His presence, but He could not fire it up. Because the Holy Spirit is still looking for you and for me. He still wants to use you and me to be burned for Him. Oh, to be consumed by Him. That's what John the Baptist says, I come to baptize in water, but the one who come after me. I come to baptize you in water, I come to baptize you in repentance. But the one who come after me, he will baptize you in fire. He will baptize you in power. He will baptize you in anointing. He will baptize you with the unction. That you will able to do what you are called to do, to have dominion. To have dominion. That's the reason why he gave us the Holy Spirit. So that we can function back into the office that God has given to man. But this time not alone, but this time with the power of the Holy Spirit. This time with the Lord himself. He wants to reign in, He wants to dwell in us today. And the Bible shows that on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and dwelt upon us. And tongue of fire came upon them. And not only that, He came to seal our salvation. Hallelujah. Oh, He came to seal our salvation. He came to seal our salvation. Seal us. The day you get saved, your salvation is sealed by Him. He came to teach us. He's a teacher. He come to teach us. If you find that you cannot study, you cannot learn, call upon Him. He's a great teacher. He came to guide us to all truth. He is the one who takes us to Jesus. He's the one who guides us to Jesus because Jesus is our truth. And the truth will set you free, will set me free, will set everyone free. He come to guide us to the truth. Oh, He come to remind us we are forgetful. We are forgetful at times, but because God given us the Holy Spirit, He remind us, He tell us, hey, this is what you should do, this is what you should do. He remind us. Oh, He become our reminder, our alarm clock. When things go wrong, we he tell us, hey, wrong. Remind us. Not only that, He come to bear fruit through us. The nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's why we prayed for the past 72 days. Nine fruit of the Holy Spirit come to fill us with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So we function with the fruit of God's kingdom. The nine fruit of the Holy Spirit actually basically is the attribute of God Himself. We carry the attribute of God. Do, do you see now the kingdom attribute? We carry the influence of God into us. And he come and speak about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Also the attribute of God. And today he spoke about the fivefold ministry, the gift, spiritual gift. Oh, brothers and sisters, he come to bear us. He come to equip us with spiritual gift. Spiritual gift so that we can function in our office with anointing, with effectiveness. Effectiveness, that's the key. To be effective in our calling, not to be misfit, but to be effective in the gifting that God has given to us. He come to comfort us. Comfort us. We need to be comforted. Amen. At this moment, I believe God is comforting many of you who are going through difficult time. He come to comfort you. The Holy Spirit is there to comfort you. He's holding your hand and say, it's okay. He will be vile. He'll be okay. He'll be fine. He's there to comfort you. He's also come to fill us up. Sometimes we get dry up. He come to refresh us. Fill us up. Not only that, He come to empower us. That's the scripture Elder James read. From there, we can draw a few truths. They were speaking about the power of the Pentecost. The power of Pentecost. Miles Munro said this. The Holy Spirit, the most important person on earth. Most important person on earth is the Holy Spirit. Nothing else. 
is the Holy Spirit. He's the most important person. After reading all the characteristic of the Holy Spirit, after reading all the personality of the Holy Spirit, that to prove you that He is the most important person. Not your president, not your prime minister, not your government, not your bank, not your finance, nobody. He is the one who is the one who is promote you. He's the one who bless you. He's the one who encourage you. He's the one who will build you up. He's the one who strengthen you up. Oh, there's a power of the Holy Spirit today wants to work with you, wants to run with you, wants to cry with you. My brother, my sister, through what he said, he's the most important person on earth. Since the day I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, I must say, my life is transformed. Oh, change, my preaching change, my prayer change. Oh, my perspective change. How I see things different change. The Holy Spirit bring clarity, bring understanding, bring us to a place of clear understanding. No more confusion, no more cloudness of mind. My brother, my sister, through this I learn one thing. There's a joy in Pentecost. That is my message today. I want to share to you the joy of Pentecost. The joy of Pentecost. Oh, brother and sister, before we go any further, we need to know what Pentecost is. The term Pentecost comes from the Greek word called Pentecosti or Pentecosta. Simply means Limaplo, 50 days after the resurrection. It refers to the fest festival celebrated on the 50 days after Passover and resurrection. Oh, some call it Feast of Week. 50 days, Feast of Week. In fact, the Hebrew call it Shavuot. Shavuot. They call it Shavuot. It's one of the Jewish important holidays celebrating for God giving them the Torah to the Jewish people in the Mount of Sinai. Oh, He gave that whole teaching. Right? It's also known as the Feast of the Week, which conclusion of the counting of the seven weeks. So it's 50. He has to link to the ancient Spring Harvest Festival. It's one of the three important pilgrimage holidays. That's the reason why when on the day of Pentecost came, there were nations gathered together. Because they were celebrating Shavuot, Pentecost, the Feast of the Week. It is interesting to know in this feast, in this feast, you know, the bread they prepared has an yeast in it. Very interesting. Most times in the feast is unleavened bread. But for this feast, there's an yeast in it. Because this feast will follow with the feast of unleavened bread. Which is also yeast need to be removed. You know, so unleavened bread, there's no yeast. But this feast, there's an yeast in it. So this is to signify the removing of the old east and bringing in the new east. Hallelujah. So Passover is removing the old east and, 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 and uh, Shavuot or Pentecost is bringing in the new east. So Jesus explains that the leaven, he said he explained that the leaven must be careful of it. In fact, he said the teaching, he warned us, he went against the leaven of the Pharisees. Why? Because the leaven of the Pharisees is a doctrine and a tradition of man that bring you to bondage. Bondage. Legalistic. Rigid. Very rigid. Ritualistic. They bring you to bondage. It doesn't make you grow. It makes you weak. It doesn't make you creative. It makes you lesser creative. God is a God of creative. The Holy Spirit, Spirit of creative. He hovers. He moves. That's the reason why He gave us the Holy Spirit. The Passover we learn. In the Passover we learn. He removed the old leaven. Removed the old leaven. The old yeast. And Shavuot, He gave us a new leaven. A new teaching. Therefore, what happened on that Shavuot? You know what happened on Shavuot? On that we commemorate the anniversary of the giving of Torah. Simply means the giving of teaching. In the same time on the Pentecost, we receive the Holy Spirit, the teacher. Oh, look at that. Look at the connection. On Passover, the people of Israel is free from the bondage of slavery. And Shavuot were given as the instruction about how to live as God's people. When they left Passover, they left from the bondage of sin. They left from the bondage of slavery. When they reached to the Mount of Sinai, God gave them instruction, teaching, how you should live your life, how you should walk your life, how you should live and abide with the principle of God's truth. That's why we need to learn. We need to learn the ways of God. We need to learn the ways of God and unlearn the ways of man. Oh, in Shavuot, in Pentecost, we learn the ways of God. In Passover, we give up the ways of man. 
sorry, in Passover we give up the ways of man. And in Pentecost and Shavuot we learn the ways of God. Oh, brothers and sisters, we learn the ways of God. There are some similarity in Torah giving and the Holy Spirit giving in the book of Acts. There's some similarity in there. Torah, it simply means the teaching. John chapter 14 verse 26 says, The Lord gave us a teaching. He gave us an advocator in John 14 46. We learn that the Lord gave us the Holy Spirit to be our advocator, to be the one who walk with us, fight for us, defend us, teach us. The Bible says He will teach us and remind us everything that He has spoken to us. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach us, remind us, like Torah was given in Shavuot to remind the people of God about the teaching, how to live your life. Now He gave us the Holy Spirit to remind us again. But this time not just to remind us, He gave us a teacher to walk with us, to comfort us, to guide us. So that we will understand the principle of God's kingdom. In Acts 2, verse 1 to 4, we learn about the Pentecost experience. We saw what happened. There was a blowing of the wind and a violent wind and a house became shaking. Fire came down. They saw a similar tongue of fire. Oh, you read the scripture, you find people spoke in different languages. Different languages. There is interesting connection between what happened in the book of Acts at the upper room and what happened in the Mount of Sinai with the group of people with, with Moses receiving the Torah. There's some similarity there. You know what is similarity? The symbol is wind, fire, smoke and voice. Same thing happened in Mount Sinai. Same thing happened in the upper room. Oh, brothers and sisters, in Hebrew word, this translation of thunder found in the book of Exodus 20, 18, the same translation of thunder, it speaks about voice of language. Voices of language. According to Jewish tradition, when I was doing my preparation, I was studying some of their writing on this. According to Jewish tradition, not biblical tradition, Jewish tradition, they believe the Ten Commandments was spoken in all the languages of the world. When God spoke, He spoke in all the languages of the world. Thundering them. Thundering them. So they will understand it. It's interesting that on the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit enabled disciples to speak many languages of those who came on the day. As you know, many of them were surprised because they were speaking the languages they understood. And these people who were speaking were just a Hebrew, fishermen, ordinary people. They have never traveled anywhere else besides Israel, but yet they were speaking about many languages. Oh, it was the same experience. So how we can learn from here? We learn number one, brothers and sisters, in the Mount Sinai, Yahweh gave us the law. In the mountain of Sinai, Yahweh gave the law written on the stone of tablet, stone of tablet, stone of tablet. But on Pentecost, He gave the law written on the hearts. Written on the hearts. He gave it on the hearts. Now, no more on the stone, but on the heart. What the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 31, 33. Jeremiah 31, 33 says, This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after the time come, declare the Lord. I will put my law in their mind and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Hallelujah. I will be their God, they will be my people. Why? Because now I'm writing not on the stone but on their heart. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27 say this. I give you a new heart. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27 say this. I give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you the old heart of stone. The whole leaven. I remove the whole leaven and I give you a heart of flesh. I will give you something more real, my Holy Spirit, who able to pump into you my heartbeat of the kingdom. And I will put my spirit in you, that's the Bible says. And you will move to follow my decree. My decree, isn't that the picture of a kingdom? You will follow my decree. There's a picture of a king who giving his instruction. And you be careful. And you will follow my decree and my laws. Oh, my decree, my laws. Now laws become no more difficult to abide because the King is with us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's with us through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, 2 to 3, You yourself are our letter. You yourself are our letter written on our heart, known and read by everyone. Oh, you show that you are the letter from Christ, the result of our ministry written not with the ink. No more ink. 
No more of the men of the hand, men, men, hands writing, men handwriting, but the spirit of the living God. That's the reason why the teacher has to come to write that into our heart, to write that into your heart, into my heart, so that we will not run away from his respect. We will run into him, not on the table of a stone, but on the table of a human heart. Hallelujah. Oh, brother and sister, brother and sister, he come to bless us, he come to encourage us, he come to walk with us. He come to encourage us and walk with us. That's the reason why Catherine Kuhlman said this. She said that God is not looking for gold vessel, silver vessel. He is just looking for willing vessel. Are you are the willing vessel? Are you the willing vessel? Yeah, that's what God is saying to you today. Are you the willing vessel? In this Pentecost, God is looking for the willing vessel. He's looking for the willing vessel that He can pour His power so that you can have life, so that you can serve, so that you can have life, so that you can have a service. The Lord Jesus gave instruction to the disciple before He ascended. He says, stay in the city. Stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from high. They waited for 10 days. 500 over them. Some say even more than 500 waited. Oh, I was in that upper room. In the last Israel trip I went, I knew. I know now what he means by that because I experienced that presence. Not the same as Pentecost, but a little bit of that experience touched my heart when I sat at the hall and I look at the left and right. I walk around everywhere. I see people crying and speaking in tongues. Oh, my goodness me. There was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, brother and sister. Oh, they came together. They cried before the Lord. 500 over people were there. By the end of the day, only 120 received the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they waited. The key is all in waiting. Oh, these 72 days, the people in our church waited. Not only in our church, but throughout the world, people waited. They waited in their home. They prayed. The whole internet world was filled up with Christian coming together, online praying. Zoom was flooded with Christian prayers and worship, prayer meeting night after night. The whole world were praying and waiting. There was a waiting. God basically locked down, locked down the world for the Pentecost. Locked down the world for the Passover. Locked down the world for the resurrection. Locked down the world for ascension. Now locked down the world for Pentecost. We were locked down. We came together. We see God God's face, the Bible says, God says, wait, wait, Luke 24, 49, wait. Oh, wait, it's all in the waiting. 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 Nothing happened without waiting, brothers and sisters. Nothing happened without waiting. And as you and I know, Jesus, John the Baptist says, I baptize you water, but who come after me will give you fire. You must go beyond repentance. Because this fire that you go will carry you through challenges. Because this quality of the Holy Spirit is to defend the cause of the King in your life. So that what He has spoken when He created man in the Garden of Eden to have dominion, you will have that together with the power of the Holy Spirit. So that you will rule where God placed you. So that you have a power to declare the power of majestic grace of Jesus. My brother, through this we learn the joy of the Pentecost is a time of refreshing. Some of you are dry and weak over this whole situation. Dry and weak. I spoke to many people. Many called me. I prayed many on the phone. I had special meeting with them, especially with their family on the Zoom. Oh, I have never done this for many, many years. This is the 72 days in this whole shutdown. I think I've done a few hundred hours of meetings, praying and speaking to people. Oh, amazing, amazing moment I had. Amazing moment listening to prayers from over the world. Over the world. If this would have happened 20 years ago, we weren't able to do this. 20 years now, we can hear America. We can hear England. We can hear Chuck Pierce. We can hear even Cindy Jacob. We can hear everyone. Julius Subi. All the prayer throughout the world. Oh, hundreds of people coming online, praying, crying. I tell you, what do you want more? This is a wonderful time. This is a pointed time. This is a great season. Don't get so caught up with COVID-19. COVID-19 is just a small problem. The biggest problem is not COVID-19. The biggest problem is sin. Sin. They're pulling many people to hell. Sin. They're killing many people. Oh, there are many sin out there. We need to deal with sin, transgression, iniquity. That is what we should deal with. COVID-19 is just a 
just a small drop in the bucket if you compare COVID-19 with abortion. Oh, the abortion has skyrocketed in numbers. There are more abortion in the world today. Oh, more babies died in the world today. Oh, more people die in cancer, diabetic, high blood pressure. Oh, more people die over this COVID-19, brothers, sisters. We shouldn't be worried about that. Oh, God want to refresh you. He want to refresh you. In fact, in the Bible translation dictionary say, a time when your soul and you receive the strength of refreshing power. Oh, He want to refresh you. He want to refresh you. He want to refresh you today. The Bible says, if you are thirsty in John chapter 4, verse 1, John chapter 4, but whoever drink of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. Will never thirst again. He doesn't want you to be thirsty. He wants you to be refreshed. That's what the Bible said. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He make me to, he, he make me to lie down in green pasture. Green pasture. He wants you to sleep and refresh. Come to me all those who be heavy laden and I will give you rest. Oh, I can go on speaking on this. He wants to give you living water. Spring of water. Not just living water. Become in him a spring of water. Spring of water. I don't know about you, but brothers, I travel a lot. And one of the, my favorite things I do is go camping. And when we go camping, I still remember we had a survivor came under raw ranges. It was in Templars Park. And we went right up to the hill. And we were right up, 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 up. And it was very close to where the water was coming up. Oh, it was cold and sweet and tastes beautiful. Tastes beautiful. My brother, my sister, he's spring water not coming from the mountain but coming from you coming from you not only that the joy of this pentecost is that we will have a new direction and new perspective how we need this oh we need this uh, post c19 they call it now what happened after this whole c19 what will be the next what will be the next move oh current situation doesn't look fantastic brothers but what next people says I believe and I'm optimistic God has a plan. He never put us in this earth to make us bankrupt. He placed us in this earth so that we will prosper. Amen. We will prosper. We are not a liability to the world. We are a blessing to the world. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are not a liability. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, you are not a liability. You are a blessing. You are a blessing to the world. You are not a liability. A new direction, a new perspective. Isaiah 11, 2 says this. The Spirit of the Lord was Set, shall rest upon him and a spirit of wisdom and understanding. Oh, uh, this is about the seventh thing about the knowledge of the Holy Spirit we can study on. Or maybe we can pray on. He said, What? He will give us what? Rest. He will give us wisdom. He will give us understanding. He will give us counsel. He will give us knowledge. He will give us fear. Oh, he will rest with upon us. Give us a clear perspective and direction how to go about it. Oh, some trust in chariot, some trust in chariot. Chariot today is like banking industry, money, finance, cling, 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 beauty, power, oh, money, work. It's nothing wrong. We need money. We need finance to survive. Otherwise, we cannot live. We need that. The Bible said, do not hate money. Love of money is what is the problem. We need money. We need money to spend, to use it for the glory of God. But we do not trust on that because those will fail. He will fail. We don't trust a human strength, human horses, human power. But our trust come in the name of the Lord. Amen. Our trust come in the name of the Lord God Almighty. He is the only one who able to bless us. He's the Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end. He is our Jehovah Jireh, the one who provide. In this current situation, you must realize God says this to you. If you look at the things in this world, like, like Peter coming up from the water, he was looking upon the Lord. He walked very easy but once he starts looking at the water he starts drowning but the lord is saying to you for my thoughts are not your thought neither my ways are my ways are your ways declare the lord as the heaven are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thought than your thoughts brothers and sisters it's a different way oh we are not living in the platform in the platform of this world we are living in a supernatural platform yeah 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 we breathe the air of this world but we have a supernatural god who does miracle, who does miracle from small amount of bread and fish, who does miracle on the water, 
who does miracle even after the fuller died, after the person died three days, uh, who does miracle that cannot be explained when nobody even have an eyeball, he put an eyeball, when a cripple he heal, uh, when a person suffer with leprosy in those days nobody can heal, he heal. My brother, my sisters, he is still healing today, he is still doing the miracle today, he is doing, doing the miracle today. Oh, he's still doing the miracle today because his thought is higher than our thoughts. Oh, that's the reason why he gave us the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit will be able to take us to the truth so that we are able to understand the King's thought. So we're able to operate in the King's thought. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm coming to the end. If you can prepare your communion, prepare your communion. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 9, uh, 11. 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. You have read the scripture many times. He said, for I know the plan I have for you, declare the Lord. The plan to prosper you, not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and future. As you take this communion, as you come together for this time of communion, the Lord wants to tell you He has a plan. His plan not to harm you. His plan to give you future, brother. His plan is to give you future. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me repeat this scripture once again. For the for my thoughts are not your thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. For I know the plan I have for you, says the Lord. The plan to prosper you. As we hold this bread, as we hold this cup together. Oh Lord Jesus, He's so good to us. He's so good to you. As some of you holding this bread and cup, I want to let you know there's a miracle waiting for you today. Miracle waiting for you today. You know, my wife prepared this bread very interestingly. I, I'm just noticing it in the bread, there's whole, whole. In fact, even when the Jewish people they eat the bread, the bread also have a hole. It's interesting to know that hole speaks about the pierced body of Jesus Christ. Pierced, broken body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We hold this bread today. We hold this cup today on this Pentecost Sunday. Oh, we want to give thanks to God. We want to praise you. Lord, we thank you for this broken body. Thank you, Lord, for this broken body. Lord, you gave us this broken body, Lord, so that you will mend us. You gave us this broken body so you will mend us. You will make us. You will pierce for your transgression of our man's sin. You will pierce for the iniquity and the sin. For the sin, for the iniquity and for the transgression of man. Oh, you are pierced for this reason, O oh God, and this bread is broken for that reason. With that, O oh God, we also receive our divine healing. Oh, thank you for this bread, O oh God, even as we hold, we know there's a process you went through. Been slogged, been broken, been pierced. Today, Lord, we stand on the Pentecost Sunday. We give thanks for this broken body. On the night before the Lord was betrayed, He took the bread, He broke it. Let's all break it together. Oh, he broke it and he said, take it in remembrance of me. Father, bless this bread even as we partake it. Let's all partake it together. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I sense. For the beginning of the service, I sense. If someone of you sitting down here, do you have a disturbance in your mind? Oh, disturb in your mind. You are depressed. I break the depression in Jesus' name. I nullify that in the name of Jesus. I cripple that disappointment in Jesus' name. 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 I cripple that, str that struggle of sleeping at night, insomnia, be broken in Jesus' name. Oh, I rested in Jesus' name. Worry, be gone in Jesus' name. Sickness, heart condition, diabetic, be gone in Jesus' name. 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 Oh, be gone in Jesus' name. He took the cup, he blessed it. 
He said, take it in remembrance of me. This cup speaks about the new covenant. Or this cup speaks about his redemption, the cross. Because of this cup, today we have the Pentecost, the power of the Holy Spirit. Because of this cup, we can enter into your presence and worship and adore you. Because of this cup, we can praise the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we say thank you for this cup. Bless it, oh, Father, Lord. Even as the body of Christ together as a family of God at home, we partake of this cup. Oh, as a New Testament, we bring the message of hope to the hopeless, message of healing to those who are broken. We bring strength to God where you placed us in, in our home, in our neighbor, in our office, during such time of appendix, uh, this whole COVID-19, this pandemic of God, we pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ will go further. So bless this cup even as we partake it, oh God. On the night before the Lord was betrayed, he took the cup, he blessed it. He said, take it in the remembrance of me. Let's all partake of this cup together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise Jesus. Before you go. I just want to say something about a man who wrote this. Someone just going to finish, all right? Before you go, he said this. This man, I, 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 I listen a lot of his messages. I hear a lot of his messages. Oh, he's such a blessing. Right, half bonke. He made a statement, a beautiful statement. He said, the lesser or the less Holy Spirit we have, the more cake and coffee we need to keep the church going. The less Holy Spirit we have, the less Holy Spirit we have, the more cake and coffee has to be carried out. Brother, this is the, we don't want cake and coffee, we want the Holy Spirit. So if you are here today, you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let me pray for you. Father Lord, as what has been spoken by Rahat Bonke, we need more of your Holy Spirit. Less of coffee and cake, but more of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray. For each one of them who are seated right now at home and those who are hearing my message right now who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I speak through this whole telecast in the name of Jesus. Let the baptism of the Holy Spirit come upon them. In Jesus' name, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you are a Christian, you believe in Jesus, you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right now, open your heart. Say, Lord, I receive I receive the baptism in the name of Jesus. Receive right now. In the name of Jesus, you are baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen and amen. If there's someone here, you have not received the Lord as your personal Savior. You have not given your life to Jesus, but today you're saying, Pastor, I heard the message. I want this Jesus. I want this Lord in my life. I want to receive him in my heart. I want to be the follower of Jesus. And then I want to also receive the power of the Holy Spirit. If that is your cry, come on, close your eyes. Repeat after me this prayer. Lord Jesus, today I come to you. I know I need you. I know I'm a sinner. I know they're wrong in my life. And I want to make it right. Today, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Come into my heart as I come into you. Jesus, I confess my sin. I confess you as the Lord and Savior over my life. Jesus, strengthen me. Guide me. Today, I surrender my life into your hand. I give my life to you, Jesus. And Jesus, give me the Holy Spirit. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit as I walk in a complete plan of the kingdom, of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And before you go, let me, let me, before I pray the prayer of the blessing, let me decree this, declare and decree this in your life very quickly, all right? Very quickly, hallelujah. I decree and declare that, your, that you have a divine guidance into the place that God has prepared you to be. I decree and declare that you are in a correct alignment at the center of the Lord's will. The Lord will defeat your enemies. I decree and declare that you are commissioned to walk in divine authority and power.
power. I decree and declare that you will walk in godly health and kingdom prosperity. I decree and declare that you will be free from all satanic witchcraft, false decrees, covenant, curse, and all bail structure that lead to aborting God's plan and avoiding the message of Jesus upon your life. I renounce every spiritual assignment over you and over your family. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare and release the fear of the Lord, the beginning of wisdom upon you, your wife, your children, your family members. Your enemy will have to respect you because you belong to the Lord. They will not touch you because you are anointed to do the work of God. They will not touch you because you are anointed to carry the message of God. I decree and declare, I decree and declare that the warring angel of God will protect you. Wherever you go in whatever you do, no spiritual power of the enemy will come nigh to you. I decree and declare that he will release you to the complete fullness of your calling, that you will not walk away from your assignment. I decree and declare that you will be free from every discouragement and disappointment, that you will walk in the complete peace, shalom, power of Jesus. Let me bless you with this blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord face shine upon you. May the Lord's countenance be upon you. May the Lord bless your going out, your coming in. May the Lord bless your family. No enemy will come nigh to you because the hate of fire of God will be around you and around your family member. And may the crown of Jesus cover you. Oh, cover you. Whatever he has given to you, you will not give away. You will keep it in your hand with firm, with vigilance. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Oh, may you be a blessing, brothers and sisters. May the fellowship of the brothers and sisters be with you. In Jesus' name we pray in us. And all of you say, Amen. Shalom. God bless you. Have a wonderful Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Amen. Amen.